Hello, Average Engineers. Today we're going to talk about the hot topic on the interwebs recently, and that is the AWS reInvent announcement about the new Amazon table buckets and Amazon S3 tables. Ooh, it's going to be spicy. Okay, so if you've been living under a rock, I don't know what's going on with you, but anyways, get on Twitter, get on any sort of tech Reddit, get on LinkedIn, whatever, and that is the rage. Amazon at reInvent announced S3 tables and everyone's going crazy. What are they and why should you care? Here's a quote from Amazon about the announcement. Amazon S3 tables deliver the first cloud object storage with built-in Apache Iceberg support. It's the easiest way to store tabular data at scale. S3 tables are significantly optimized optimized for analytics workloads. Table buckets are a third type of S3 bucket taking their place alongside existing general purpose and directory buckets. And you can think of table buckets as an analytics warehouse that can store iceberg tables. Yes. Basically what this means is after all these years, Amazon is AWS is finally deciding to join Databricks and Snowflake in the lake house battles. Okay, so let's give you a little background on the lake house and why Amazon is doing this and just talk about it at a high level. What is a lake house if you're a hobbit and you don't know what I'm talking about? Look at this picture. Basically, you have Databricks and Snowflake at the top of the pile. They've been all over this for years. You have Delta Lake and Iceberg as storage formats in the cloud. And honestly, AWS is typically one of the back ends where that compute and storage happens. And basically, what we're talking about is a total platform called the lake house, which is usually involves compute, storage, everything else that goes along with it, aka Databricks and Snowflake. And honestly, AWS has been lagging behind. Obviously, they still are part of the game when people store things on S3. We're still using compute in the background, even though it might be invisible to the end user in Databricks or Snowflake. But that's what's happening. But they really have kind of lost control of that, and this is them fighting back. So again, high level, Databricks and Snowflake dominate the lake house space. Databricks and Snowflake have struck almost a fatal blow to a lot of AWS once popular tools like EMR, Glue, Athena. They have had a bite taken out of them. There is a ton of money to be made in the lake house space. I mean, it's the new data warehouse, right? Essentially. And only a fool wouldn't try to dominate or at least have their fingers in the pie, in the lake house pie, as much as possible. And this is what AWS is doing with S3 tables. You cannot think of AWS S3 tables in a vacuum because they weren't designed and they don't exist in a vacuum. They were designed with a context, and that context, context is AWS Cloud. The lake house as we know it today is usually seen as a conglomeration of tools and tech that fit together and provide like a one-stop shop for data platform needs. Think Databricks Snowflake. AWS has been lagging behind. I mean, they have some tools, but they really haven't had like the storage layer integration unlike these other Databricks Snowflake tools. So this is what they're doing. They're getting in. They're getting back in. And to make my point clear, I just have this little quote from the marketing material put out in this announcement. I'll go ahead and read it here. AWS S3 tables give you storage that is optimized for tabular data, such as daily purchase transactions, streaming sensor data, ad impressions in the Apache Iceberg format for easy queries using popular tools, <clears throat> Amazon Athena, EMR, Spark, etc., Glue right it's in the same sentence that they're announcing s3 tables that they mention their own tools so take a cue from that it's clear aws has been falling behind in the data race or at least in controlling the data race and they want their slice of the pie and they're willing to fight for it now we have to take a sidestep here and talk about the lake house storage format wars basically iceberg versus delta lake this has been going on for a while people say it's not a fight it's totally a fight there's basically the two to pick from, Delta Lake or Iceberg. Databricks is behind Delta Lake, and they actually bought Tabular for billions of dollars, which is kind of like the creators of Iceberg. They're really trying to, people want to control this. This is super important. The storage layer of part of the lake house architecture is critical. It's the key component to the lake house platform. So you can bet everyone wants to control that as much as they possibly can. I mean, this lake house storage format where it's confusing and complicated, but, you know, it is what it is. It's going to keep going on for a while. There's people like Databricks been pushing stuff like a uniform. They're trying to say, oh, it doesn't matter what format you use. Trust me, it matters. They're built around Delta Lake. I don't know what to say. AWS, they're really, this was sort of a jab. This was clearly AWS using Iceberg instead of Delta Lake as a format for S3 tables. This was a jab in the side of Databricks. This was saying, 
This was AWS saying, hey, we have some fight left in us and bring it on. I just want to have a side note here. While this news is exciting, remember that S3 tables are late to the game. Databricks and Snowflake have been building Lakehouse platforms and getting very good at it for years and years. You know, S3 tables are going to be the underdog. They are totally late to the game here. Okay, let's jump over just to do a quick high-level introduction conceptually to S3 tables on AWS, and then we'll actually do some technical work, and we'll actually implement them and see what's going on. Okay, let's just go through some bullet points here about AWS S3 tables at a high level. I hope you've heard of S3, otherwise you're an idiot. S3 tables are stored in a new type of bucket. There's a new bucket called the table bucket. And these are just buckets that can store sub-resources, aka you can store multiple S3 tables in a single table bucket. Table buckets support tables in the Apache Iceberg format. This is a big deal. They're taking a shot at Delta Lake. You know, they say in a lot of their stuff, you'll be like, oh, we can use SQL statements to query your tables. Don't confuse that with S3 tables. S3 tables are separate from the SQL. They're just using Apache Spark and SQL in Apache Spark to query the tables. It really has nothing to do with S3 tables. Just because they're in the Iceberg format, of course you can use SQL. Again, we'll talk about this later. They say you can use any query engine that supports Iceberg. This is not necessarily true right now. You can only use Spark. There's lots of tools, Polars, DuckDB. Lots of tools can read and write to Iceberg tables, but they cannot read and write to S3 tables. So they're lying to you. It's Spark only right now. And also, you have to optimize, optimize your tables, basically compaction, optimization, vacuuming. That has to happen, and that's going to cost you money. We'll talk about that. Those are just normal things with lakehouse architectures like Delta Lake and Iceberg. Again, this is what they want you to think. Oh, we got Spark and DuckDB and Daft and Polars and all this stuff. You got Iceberg tables. You can read them. This is not true. They lied to you. You can only use Spark right now. I don't know if other tools are coming in the future. Hopefully, they don't drop the ball on that. We'll see. Okay, let's jump over to the actual code of what's going on here. Let's actually do a couple things here. Let's create a table bucket with the AWS CLI. Let's create a table in that bucket and let's insert data into it and then let's query it with Spark just to kind of get a feel for what's happening here. First, if you're like me and you try to do this AWS CLI stuff with the S3 tables right away, you'll get an error. You got to update to the latest version of the AWS CLI, of course. Here's the error I ran into and here's how to upgrade your system. Again, the first step is always going to be making a table bucket. And using the AWS CLI, it's as simple as this. Here is me creating my first table bucket. And here is me calling back to list my table buckets. And voila, you can see the one I just created there with its own ARN in AWS. So we've made it one step. Okay, now that we have a table bucket, the table bucket, the next obvious question any engineer would ask, okay, so let's like start reading and writing from this new awesome S3 table bucket. Should be super easy, right? Yeah, not really. And honestly, what's really annoying about the releases that AWS, the blogs that they put out, the marketing crap, is they kind of skip over all this stuff. They say, oh, here's what an S3 table bucket is and an S3 table, you know, all this cool stuff. And here, let's, here's me writing SQL to do stuff. And then they skip all the crap in the middle. So let's do it for real. On the official blog, I got some screenshots here. They use EMR. And guess what? That's pretty much your only option right now if you're on AWS. It's kind of uh, sucks. And they kind of gloss over that. That basically you have to go through the whole EMR process to do this or you have to do what I do later and I'll show you is install spark on an EC2 instance and go through the same hoopla you're definitely not going to be able to just pick up polars and read this s3 table as far as I can tell at least from what they've shown and what I've read I just want to remind you something this is not a seamless experience this exemplifies the exact reason why EMR lost to Databricks and Snowflake and lost a lot of business to them is because of this kind of crap. They don't make it seamless, they don't make it easy, and it's just a bunch of steps that we were doing 10 years ago working with Spark. I mean, give me a break, we shouldn't have to go through all this just to work with S3 tables. I'll show you some more snippets from the doc of how they actually go through their EMR cluster and set up and work with it, which of course they skip all this in the marketing blog. They just kind of like gloss over it like it's nothing. But you know, you have to create the table bucket. They set up security and policies on there. They went ahead and created an EMR cluster, set up a bunch of configs, SSH into the machine, and then of course, pass a bunch of crazy configs into Spark to start it to actually do the work. And here's some examples, some screenshots of them doing that. You can see here, creating a cluster, making a configuration JSON. Of course, then you got to SSH into that machine, into the node, and then you got to start the Spark shell with a bunch of this stuff going on, all these configs, which this is pretty typical stuff for anybody who's used to work on a Spark. Although if you work with Databricks, you don't have to do much of this crap. Of course, you have to have the table bucket ARN that we created before. I mean, honestly, for most people, this is just going to be a non-starter. 
when you're trying to sell something to the masses, especially the data masses full of analysts and data scientists, they're just not going to go through all this crap. That's why people went to Snowflake and Databricks in the first place is they don't want to go through this kind of stuff. They just want to clickety clickety run analytics on their data. They don't want to jump through these hoops. And they're not going to. Also, super funny thing, if you look at the screenshot from AWS's docs, it looks at, so look at this, it says access, accessing Amazon S3 tables from open source query engines. Oh, awesome. Here's the list. Apache Spark. Yeah, nice list. It's a list of one, you ding-dongs. I mean, I really hope they fix this in the future. They're going to crash and burn, man. This is ridiculous. They need to add support for things like Polars, Pandas, DuckDB, whatever. They just need to get with it. Anyway, so I figure I don't want to spend money on an EMR cluster. Why the crap would I want to do that? I'm just going to start a little EC2 instance to all Spark, see if I can do this. So that's exactly what I did. I set up a T2 small instance in AWS, as you can see here. I went ahead and SSH'd into that machine. Of course, once I was in, I had to run all this lovely linux ubuntu commands to get a bunch of stuff installed including spark and what else i need for spark once i got it running as you can see here i used 3.5.3 as my spark version i went back and i grabbed the spark shell commands including all the stuff they put in their docs and then i grabbed the arn of the bucket i created early and showed you and added that to the command at that point you can see it started up spark fine but then it busted out saying hey i can't find credentials not that surprising I went ahead and added my AWS credentials on this EC2 box in the environment and started up again. It seemed to work fine. And of course, from there, it was pretty simple. You can see here, I'm creating a namespace for a table. So it's a namespace inside the bucket. And once I had that done, I went ahead and created a simple little table called Dingaling in my Hobbit's namespace. You can see, very simple, straightforward. Once I had done that, I went over and checked the S3 bucket. Voila, there that same table is right there. Magic. And of course, I just ran a simple insert statement as we would expect. And then I went ahead and just counted it back from that S3 table and got the count back. So it worked. And it was, you know, once you got everything set up, it worked fine. But geez, it wasn't fun getting there. I would take a side step to talk about pricing. Just go on the internet and look. People are already complaining about it. Yes, it's AWS. Yes, it's going to be expensive. You've got storage pricing, request pricing on that data. You've got maintenance pricing for the compaction and table maintenance. It's going to get expensive. How can we boil this all down? What can we say about S3 tables? S3 tables are made to be used and integrated with AWS products like Glue, Athena, and EMR and not open source stuff. That is clear. Also, S3 tables are just an answer to what Databricks and has done with Delta Lake and what Snowflake has been doing. They're just an answer to the lake house wars. AWS wants a slice of that pie. Clearly, S3 tables right now lack general query engine and interaction support outside of Apache Spark. I mean, this is kind of a joke to me. I don't know why they launched it like this. Give me a break. Also, S3 tables are just generally going to have a higher learning curve than just S3. People think S3 super simple, which it is. Well, these S3 tables are more than that. They're Apache Iceberg, and you kind of have to go through a little bit of hoops here and there. How many people are going to go piddling around with EMR clusters to make it work? I don't know, probably the people that are already using EMR, and they're probably already thinking of moving to Databricks or Snowflake. What this move makes clear is that lake houses are taking over the data world and becoming the de facto standard replacing the data warehouse, and AWS making S3 tables proves that point. Also, we didn't talk about this much, but certainly this S3 table being in the Apache Iceberg format, this is going to deepen and foment more of the wars and battles in the lake house storage format wars. Apache Iceberg versus Delta Lake, it's only going to heat up from here because of this. Also, these S3 tables, I mean, they're going to be expensive. There's just no doubt about it. And AWS still has some serious continuity problems. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to give you a one-stop shop for that lake house platform. I don't know, people have been moving away from things like EMR and glue over to Databricks for a reason. Are they going to come back just because S3 tables? Absolutely not. My biggest fear is that AWS is just going to leave their S3 tables as is in their current state. And this basically just going to be a little tool for the people already on glue and EMR to saying, hey, now you have a reason not to migrate to Databricks. Stay here, use S3 tables. Yeah, maybe. But I really hope they just continue to grow this. I hope they start releasing stuff for Python, Boto3. AWS CLI making it easier to ingest data in there. I don't know. No one's going to do it if you have to spin up an EMR cluster every single time. If you want it to be generally adopted, they got to start releasing more support for other query engines. I don't know. Let me know what you think about S3 tables. I think it's a bit of a kind of tongue in cheek thing. It's exciting, but in this end, it's just what we've had already, and it's no one's really going to migrate back to 
AWS off of Databricks just to use an S3 table, that would be ridiculous.